Welcome to Ludus Rollbacks. My name's Kirsty. I'm Phil. Hi, I'm Matt. You join us as we do our initial thoughts and set up of Messina 1347. Ooh, yeah. Matt, tell us a bit about the game. Yeah. It's by a, um, a designer who we've played games with before, by Demir Suki and Raul Fernandez Arpaccio. And it's set in Messina in 1347 when there was a terrible plague. Um, the plague arrives on the boats and we are playing as nobles who own estates and are evacuating citizens to our estates. Now, it is worth saying that we are not generous nobles who are bringing citizens out to our estates and just letting them lounge around and drink wine. No, <laughs> they'll be working for us. <laughs> it's, it's true. Hard. It's true. Well, if they can get out of the quarantine. <laughs> if they can get out of the quarantine. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like an, another pandemic you're familiar yeah. with. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I interrupted. That's so rude. So um, it's a tile placement. Well, it's not tile placement. Yeah. It's um, a modular board, and um, it's not a worker placement. It's worker movement. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a nice mechanism. Um, slight hint of Yokohama vibe about it when yeah, you're moving exactly. around the board, and it can get expensive if you want to get to some. Very um, expensive. Mm-hmm. Different positions. So money is quite tight, but that's quite a nice thing about it. The resources yeah, are. I think yeah. could not get wood in the last game. It was very difficult to find wood. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsty was hogging it. Mate. But honestly, <laughs> buying boats that's the strategy. Mm. Um, well, so, we'll find out. Yeah, we shall. Uh, without any further ado, let's go down to the table and let's show you how to set this game up for a three-player game. You'll take the main tiles labelled A and locate all the tiles with the three player symbol. You'll also add to them randomly one of the B tiles and you'll find the appropriate, in this instance, a three player setup and start to randomly shuffle the tiles and lay them out in the appropriate setup. So this is our setup for a three player game and we'll turn it to face you. Now you're going to add the harbours to each corner of the board. Once again, if you need a point of reference, the rule book is there for you. And the scoreboard um, registers track will be placed within reach of at least one player. And then the uh, nun workshops, the noble workshops, and the work people workshops will be placed on the board. Um, and the quarantine huts split into piles of three, neatly placed on the board. And the wagons are also placed on the board in numerical order. And then at the round five workshops are placed to the side of the board ready to come on. Each player will receive a player board and resources will be stacked by the side of the board. To go with each player board, and these will be starting on the A side, will be the scroll um, lock-in. The scroll lock-in will be used later in the game. And now we're putting all the workers out and turning all the nobles, the nuns, and the workmen all on the level one side and placing them neatly by the board, whilst at the same time putting out all the other resources that are available in the game. That's the wood, that's the rats, and it's the play cubes. Now we've got this sorted out, and we move into the final setup on each of the player boards. So each player will have um, a series of discs. Discs will be three overseer discs, which are placed at the center of your estate. You will also play one of your colored discs on the score track, one on each of the registers, the popularity register, the city register, and the cathedral register, and a player disc on the turn order. Now we are gonna hand out the quick reference guides. We're gonna stack the boats in a moment. And there we go, we're ready to play. So, we have Messina set up on the board for three players. Um, player board set up, we're ready to go. Mm-hmm. So what we'll do is we'll just talk you quickly and briefly through how the game works. We won't do a full rules explanation and then we'll just do a little bit of our initial thoughts. And um, hopefully the explanation of how the game plays will give you an idea when we're talking about the game and our initial thoughts about it how you're going to maybe interact with the game itself. If not, and if you want to see a full playthrough, that will follow as well. So Matt, do you want to tell us a bit about how the game plays? Definitely. The um, packages are set out as a, as a per pre-arranged uh, rulebook guidance. We have three lieutenants to start. 
and um, whenever you place a lieutenant onto a tile you get the uh, the benefit of the top left uh, bonus um, for your first round you're putting out workers and mechanic wise that's no that's fine because mechanic wise at the end of your turn everything lays down and then to get between spaces so if I wanted to come to this space here, I'd pay a coin and then take that action. You can have a distinction between an inactive worker and an active worker. Okay. When we... Go on, Phil. I was going to say, this also now means that my worker cannot remain in this space when it does activate. So Matt has blocked that space for me, so I'm going to have to stand and move. And you can move anywhere adjacent to the tile for free. Mm -hmm. If you want to skip a tile, it's cost a coin to get to that tile there, potentially. Okay. If you bring a lieutenant to a space with a worker, uh, this is a nun. We're going to rescue this nun. This nun can come back to our estate and work on the estate until such time it's safe to return to Messina. If I would arrive at the square and the nun has um, encountered a plague token, we will be putting the nun straight into our quarantine and she'll remain there for two weeks. Prevent spread and all that. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. What I do like about quarantine in this game, Matt, is you can put someone in quarantine, but you can still make them work. It's work. They can. It's working from home. Yeah. They're, yes, they're bringing exactly. you an uncanny bonus, so yes. you can actually put a workshop here for um, a production bonus. As long as there's someone in here, you'll mm -hmm. generate a bonus. Um, so there's a, a little bit to manage, but it's quite intuitive. So you hit the tile in turn order. You'll rescue a person you can pay um, a fire token to remove, so you pay that, that's removed, and then you'll increase on the fo on the popularity, popularity track. track. Um, so yeah. every, every play cube you fight will push you up and you get the immediate bonus. And there are actually um, double fire tokens mm -hmm. where you can take out an adjacent, so if there was two plagues, tokens here and here, I've got this, I'll go there, and. That's for two plague, and I'd move up two on the track. Preventing the spread. Absolutely. You burn those rats out. <laughs> um, the so, plague. So then that's the, the fundamentals of the board. The only other thing to note on here is that if I wanted to come to a harbour hex, I'd still pay a coin. Here's a coin, what they look like. So you pay a coin to come to here, but I'd have to pay two coins if I wanted to come to a dock where there may be a ship. Mm -hmm. there. That's how it should be in there. The ships arrive with a plague token on them, and you can have unlimited unlimited lieutenants on the dock itself. Mm -hmm. You still have to fight the fire as normal, but you immediately gain three coins. The coins are very useful in this yeah. game. Yes, they are. Very useful. So, and so, so this is just a normal hex to move through. This is counts as a hex at dock. So yeah, you, yeah. If you're here, you can move here for free, for example. Yeah. Yes. So but the if other you're going from the dock to here. That's two minutes. So an action you're going to want to keep an eye on in the games is, uh, where's the sword? Someone point me a sword. They're just here, the build action. Now the build action allows you to construct one of these workshops or one of these quarantine huts. And these are going to give you a benefit um, at each production phase. Mm. Um, the quarantine huts will only give you a benefit if you've got someone in quarantine. Yeah. The workshops you're going to put at the side of your player board and as soon as you put someone in there, they are locked into that that um, that in endeavor for the remainder of the game. They become an expert in that field. They become an expert in that exactly. field. Exactly. And they don't want to leave. They are they dedicated to, to the job of making fire and coins for you. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, but you those, that production is one of the ways in which you're going to keep yourself provided mm. with enough resources to get through the game. Um, so I think it's worth noting that the build action is hotly fought, uh, hotly contested, mm. and it's quite out the way in this particular. Yeah, it really is. Out the way. So uh, yeah, so we'll not... see how that plays out. Um, and how about the estates, Kirsty? How's that going to work? So on the estate, um, you basically this is your homeland, um, and you have different areas of which the people can be placed in. Obviously, nuns can only go in the nunnery. Nunnery, <laughs> should we say? No, it's the wrong one. This one can go anywhere in this section as long as it matches the colour in the background. 
uh, the um, nobles, aristocrats. Yeah, the aristocrats. aristocrats. They are officially we shorten it to nobles. We'll They're still yeah. noble. Uh, go anywhere in the green area, and the carpenters slash workers slash labourers, manual labourers, go into the brown section, and you can see cunningly that matched the iconography very well. And what happens is on the board you'll see there are symbols which match these areas here and there are a few dotted around and it means that you can move this token which is known as an overseer along the track one and gain either, just show you one here, number of benefits depending on whether your overseer is a one action overseer or if you've had the ability to flip it by going up the track in the bottom of the piece of point, sorry, I can't quite reach. There's an ability which turns over your overseer to a two times power. It upgrades your overseer to yeah. a whip carrying overseer who can now whip two people into work. We do not condone this. <laughs> and therefore, you see, it goes from being one action in this area to being two actions and so on. You can spread them depending on which path you take. Now, you'll note that there are arrows on these areas and when you go round, you have to make a decision at this point whether you're going to go left or right. And the reason being, is once this has gone round, at the end of this course here, you get a, a whopping three actions. Anywhere on the plane. Anywhere, one. but then well, one that action, sorry, One action in <clears> each, <throat> each third. Yeah, they can be anywhere. Yeah. So but everywhere yeah. a tile is, it relates to the action yes. in that space. So as long as you've got a person who is able to do that action, it can have, it, they, these three can come from anywhere, but that overseer is then out of the game. So if you race round, you can't then use that overseer, which is why you have the others. Now, it's worth noting in a game of Messina, you can only ever upgrade two overseers and that's here and, and here track. there is no other way to do the third one so if you're planning on it don't <laughs> that's fair so um there's only a couple more things to talk about i think um uh, just to give you a broad idea of the game you've got some points accumulators on your board and um, they're going to be used on a scroll action which is predominantly on your player board and it will boost either your um victory points for buildings at the end mm. of the game victory points for how many boats you've collected which is a very strong strategy or victory points for how much of Messina you've repopulated. Matt, we've not talked about repopulating Messina. No, if you're doing a good job and everyone is yeah. fit and healthy on your estate, you have the option to buy a wagon. And what a wagon will do is that for each wagon on every turn, you can take people off your board, look at the tile and sacrifice your bonus. So if I said, I'm not going to take the two wood, you're going to but, go there. Yeah, I'm on this spot. I'm going to pay two words, a worker, a aristocrat, and two nuns from my estate. So they're not in quarantine, mm -hmm. they're not at the workshop. I would then come here, claim those end game points at the very end of the game, immediately nice. score two points. Mm -hmm. Every time someone visits this a location, I receive two points, or if I could have a um yeah, if there's, right, a, so there's a play cube. A play cube that. is it? That means I would actually take a rat, which mm -hmm. are negative points at the end of the game. If you take too many rats, and the main way to take a rat is that I've got a worker. Let's have a look. Mm. Oh, perfect. Thank you. If I came here and I couldn't fight, if I didn't have any fire on me, I can take this nun to my quarantine, um, but I'd also take a rat. Uh, just a point. The rat on, was in the nun's pocket. Just a point on that, those two nuns, they shouldn't be in the oh, same right. quarantine house. So yeah. before someone tries to jump on us and create us, we know this and we won't, we won't, <laughs> don't make those mistakes. Um, so broadly, that's a nice overview of the game. Um, you're going to be pushing up these tracks. The centre track mm. gives you extra workers eventually. Um, they are worth lots of victory points at the end of the game. And on the top track, um, you reduce your position on the top track at the end of the game by the number of rats you've got as well. Mm -hmm. So that can cost you points at the end of the game as well as costing you rat points at mm -hmm. the end of the game. Yeah. Um, so that is Messina 1347 in a nutshell. Mm -hmm.
Initial thoughts. Okay. Kick us off, Kirsty. Right, quick ones. So, um, as many games at the moment are, they have variable player boards in the respect that these tiles are shuffled and yep. placed in any random order, like a deck of cards. So that gives the game so much variability and replayability, which is quite a lot of the games at the moment in the hotness have that. Yeah, an ability it's, to it's change seems, your yeah. initial startup positions. What's also really nice about this game is this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful uh, steering captain's wheel. So how this works is it gets randomly turned at the start, you don't look, and then you stop, and you'll see that on the tiles, the rats are facing either to the left, to the right, this is your right, left and right, or standing. Or towards Matt, towards Phil, towards Kirsty. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> this game. so the rats in this, like in the first round, if this was the first round, would all go on the tiles which are facing Matt. So it'd be here, here. Mm. It. Yeah, there's one there. Oh, yeah, I can't see it. Yeah, yeah, so there's a little bit of. Um... And then each with the workers are placed on the different colours. So this again adds another level of variability. It's randomness. It's, it's just gives that so much more yeah. than just a what, standard. What I like board. about that, Kirsty, is that sometimes I'm really going to need a nun to benefit mm -hmm. my scroll or progress my board. So it encouraged me to go to a tile I might not have wanted to go to. Yes. You'll find those decisions come a lot in this game. Yeah. You'll you'll be like, ah, oh, if I can get a worker in here before I advance this overseer, I'm going to be able to upgrade yeah. or get a, a build an action. Mm. And then you look on the board and go, yeah, but I don't want that action. <laughs> but yeah. I do want. Yeah. And if no one clears the cube, some workers some work die. Will, will yeah. pass. They'll, some yeah. they'll, they'll yeah. have a bad. They'll have a bad time. Yeah, and, the um, plague will consume. Yeah, so it's mm. um, and I think that, that variable setup is a fantastic way of keeping this game vibrant yeah yeah um but the crunchiness of the decision making in mm -hmm. this without it actually dragging down into like bog really bogging down into ap i think is a, a, a real mm -hmm. tribute to the design mm -hmm. because what you're looking at in this design is each worker has got a limited real scope and we you know matt explained that you can pay a coin to like like jump a few hexes but coins aren't that they're not that common in the game so really you can find yourself, and I did like the other day, found myself kind of like in this kind of area and wanting to get over to that side of the board, but not being able to do it mm. easily. And actually thinking to myself, you've done that to yourself. You've left yourself yeah. in a position where you're not spread broadly enough across the board. Mm. Yeah. But I went to those locations because that was the action I wanted at the, when I first put the workers on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Without thinking two or three steps ahead where actually mm. I might need to be able to access other parts of the board. And that, my fault, and that I like. Yeah, yes. it is harsh in some places, but I've noticed that if, if you have good timing, you can do a little bit of combos. Mm. So if you get something that triggers here and then it pushes you up the track, or it then gives you something else. So there's a, yeah. a little feeling of, you know, some terms can be quite rewarding, which is quite nice. Um, I also think the iconography is really clear on this particular game. Yes. I've played some games where it's not as clear. <laughs> I, I think that this is, um, this is a, a, you know, mm. genuinely really good. But yeah, I think the little player aids are quite nice. Yeah. Like it's, it's interesting because I think the first time we, we played the game we used these quite a lot yeah. the mm -hmm. second time we played the game didn't touch them at all no. <laughs> so that, I think that really it's just to check, check the rats at the end yeah. really what, yeah. the, what the calculation is really back to what Matt's saying that actually the game is really well laid out what do you yeah. think of the rule book film? it's super it, it's well structured it's easy to follow the setup um, is short, short, isn't it? The setup yeah. for uh, yeah. what it takes to and, and actually it's like 10 minutes to get it on the board and and the game it <coughs> gives you enough of that 10 minutes are absolutely worthwhile getting the game set up. Mm, definitely. Um, but the rule book is really clear throughout. When you want to check a rule, you'll find it pretty quick. Well, yeah. it's done something you pointed out that I hadn't seen before. They've stuck all the icons in the game on the front page. So you yeah. put the rule book mm. and you just look at all the icons yeah, immediately. So I'll just have a reach in and grab mm. this. So on the back of the book, um, so double over page, front book, back of the book, everything you need to know is on the back of the book, and it really yeah. is. Um, and Don't be flicking the number of, the number of yeah. times Matt's gone, oh, what does that mean? I've just gone, da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> and that actually, has happened. <laughs> actually, it answers the question. It's really nice. Um, even to, and like this is really trivial, I like how many games do you play where you, you like, the rules are fine, mm -hmm. what you forget is 
initial setup for players based yeah, on that, player's that's position. Yeah. Yes. Because you do oh. get varying. Mm. And, and often you'd be going, right, okay, and it's like a one line in the setup, and you're like, where is it? Where is it? Mm. No, on here. Um, player one gets nothing. Player two gets one point. Player three gets one that's point. Excellent. Player yeah. four gets a point. Really good. Point. Done. Like, you don't even have to open the rule book to no. set up, and yeah. it's just like, Fine, because actually the the setup maps are also on the on the back just here. Mm. So you, you well, I think that's testament to um, good play testing. I should I imagine they they put a lot of hours into the testing and yeah. passing that rule book around to other people that haven't had the experience. Um, yeah, I'm good fairly feeling. confident that Praga had a similar. I think maybe it might be designer slash publisher. Mm -hmm. Is something like we had player raids in Praga, and actually iconography in Praga, fantastic. Yeah, and it's one of those that. You can see that it's been so well thought, and as you said, yeah. paint tested. Delicious Games production mm. standards are really high. Yeah, um, really high. And producing games where the rule book doesn't get in the way of playing the game. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very like, much so. For me, that's that's so it's important. worth its weight in gold, yeah. actually. Yeah. To some and games. it's not a, a particularly expensive game. I know we talked about mm. costs in some games mm. in the past. It's not like a seventy, eighty pound game, and mm. you just feel like there's good value in the box for what yeah. you get. Yeah. And there's probably there's probably like in hours of gameplay in this mm. box, there's more than there's there's more than seventy pounds worth of gameplay yeah, in this box. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So it's it's a, it's a real it's a really good if you like if you like a mid pushing towards heavyweight euro Spinky. with lots mm. of decision mm. points, lots of mm. crunch. Well, that leads on to Kirsty's strategy. Tell us about mm. strategies, Kirsty. You talk about this a lot and the variability mm. in strategies. What do you think of the strategies in this? So, in this one, for me. I've always tried to fight fire mm. as one I keep because you're gaining resources or gaining increases up the other tracks. Now, what's worth bearing in mind is this is what third, fourth, fourth player, yeah, maybe, maybe of this one. I have never increased my meat boards to more than three. Mm. <laughs> never. And one one game. And you're and always well. competitive. And yeah. I've always come very close, or you know, it's not been that many behind. And actually, sometimes if you're spending resources or movements to go along there to attempt to get just the people, mm. you could be pushing it elsewhere mm. for me to get other, you know, the, like the overseer, improve both your overseers mm. along that track as a priority. You gain, go as far as you can at the fire track yeah. as priority because you, you, you constantly hear them stuff. Back you have to choose between the church track or the city track as well to do yeah. both okay. very very difficult mm -hmm. and and equally buying buildings is a strategy or yeah. collecting boats is a strategy yeah. <laughs> there's a few things to you know just getting two or three overseers around yeah. if you can come to a spot and get two or three people in one turn with no mm -hmm. plague they go you know straight to your estate and they're working for you which is great and we've not mentioned that the other strategy which is repopulating Messina mm -hmm. because of course some yes. serious points yeah. available on this board yeah. so um, 15 here yeah 17, 17 19, a couple of wagons 14. and you can be talking 50 points from mm -hmm. this board quite and if comfortably but there's yeah. a risk of rats you but start if you haven't soon. taken any rats up until that point it's yeah, it's almost three, a no-brainer. Is, is it three that you can take? Well, that, yeah, three, three is minus two points. Which, yeah, at the end of things, it, it's yeah, not, I mean, yeah, like, if you went for 19, 17, and 15, yeah. minus two, big rock. But that shows it's been play-tested. It's been, yeah. Yeah, it's been it's balanced yeah, well. Somebody's taking the time mm. to, to establish that, which and is good. what is nice is the game the game <laughs> values, from a, from a tactical point of view, the game values doing a little bit of everything, yeah. but then eventually... Mm. And you don't have to make that decision in the first two rounds. No. Mm. Um, eventually focusing on something. Mm. And you can wait to see how the game's settling out for other players mm. before you settle on your final approach to mm. maximising your score. Whilst at the same time, you're feeling more powerful as you go through the game. The game mm. gives a lot as you play without ever giving too much to make the game too easy. Mm. Another thing which is really nice about this game is that the um, first player always changes yeah. the order of play changes every depending on where yeah. you are on a track on certain tracks or victory points etc do you know what i've never thought about how in so, how interesting that is mm. i think it does actually give someone who maybe is you know lagging behind in one area but improving in another that extra little boost that little help that assistance yeah because you know. yeah you don't want if you're in the lead and the, the rich mm. get richer yeah it's going to be a runaway lead yeah. problem sometimes whereas so. that I yeah. believe heavily 
Mm-hmm. It gives it an even balance. And we've played I this like with, with four players, and, yeah. it, it, and it still remains it's got that tightness to it of yeah. getting around and getting what you want. So I think it was really, really, you know, it scaled well between mm. players, I found. I, I couldn't agree more. And that, that, that switch of, of uh, starting play based on tracks and Richard points, just, it's clever and it's well done. It's yeah. like a little thing, but it means you're not always following the same player. So yeah. it gets sometimes confusing to find, especially yesterday when we did the four player. Yeah. We were bouncing all over the table, but it's yeah. nice. It gives, it, it, it keeps you engaged. It means that this board, everyone has the opportunity <clears> to move <throat> first pretty much mm. throughout the game. Mm. So you will always get something that you want first time. Yeah. yeah. And one of the things for me is it's got a combination of hidden points yep. and mm. active points. So yeah. you can see how everyone's progressing throughout the game. Mm. Um, anything with an immediate um, red symbol is mm. an immediate point. Anything yellow is end game scoring. So it is. It, it, you've got you've got the angst of waiting to see yeah. that final calculation, yeah. which which I, I quite like in games. Great Western yeah. Trail's got a lot of hidden yeah. points. So that's yeah. a, yeah. And actually, what's nice yeah. is getting some of these buildings that can generate victory points and just churn your sure. victory points. Out yeah, and it's like it's fine. Um, and actually, when you upgrade any of your nuns, nobles, or labourers, they then give you um, victory, points. victory points. So oh, yes. on the back of them, they, and that's a strategy you often mm-hmm. follow is that uh, upgrade the people as soon as possible to give you an influx of victory points every turn. Yeah, you get six production turns, which I feel yeah. is the right amount. It doesn't yeah. feel yes. like too short no. or too many. <clears throat> um, but yeah, it's. It's got a lovely flow to it, the game. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It doesn't, it's not, you don't feel, oh, I wish it had another round. You don't feel, oh, mm. this is dragging on. It's got a really nice play. Yeah, there's no, um, that you don't look, oh, oh it was a three hours, not, I'm not going to mm. get back. It's mm. a real, um, you don't realise where the time's going. No.